Okay, so we started our discussion of linear dependence and linear independence of vectors. But before we continue along these lines, it's useful to take a slight detour but and discuss systems of linear equations, which we are all sort of familiar with. So uh, the following few lectures will be in the nature of recall, but perhaps there are also some ways of thinking which are which you have not seen exactly in the way in which we will present it, right. So, um, and in the process we will, um, you know, describe something called the row reduction of matrices, right. So, which is really a, an algorithmic way of, you know, solving for systems of uh, linear equations. Okay, let's begin our discussion of row reduction in this lecture. Okay, we are all familiar with the notion of a matrix, right? So examples of matrices include like what I have given here A and B. You know, matrices are just collections of numbers usually, which are, there's a notion of a certain number of rows, there's a notion of a certain number of columns. So the ith column and the jth row is going to have an element, which is typically a number. It could be real numbers or complex numbers, typically the kind of matrices that we are interested in, right? And one context from which matrices come about, maybe if you have a system of linear equations like this, I have chosen one particular example, 2x minus y minus z equal to 0, 6x plus 5z plus 3z equal to 14, and x minus y plus z equal to 1, right. So one matrix of immediate interest when you have given a system of equations like this is the so-called matrix of coefficients, denoted m. Right, so you just collect all these coefficients. I have a two, I have a minus one, and I have a minus one. I put them in the first row. Six, five, five, and three constitute the second row, and one minus one and one forms the third row. So this is the matrix of coefficients for this system of equations. Now, it allows us to write, rewrite this system of equations in a compact way. Right, so if we define these vectors r, right, x, y, z are, you know, our variables are unknowns for which we want, we want to come up with a systematic way to solve these and that can be written as a vector like this. And so there is k is another vector which has these numbers 0, 14 and 1 which appear on the right hand side, we can be bundled together into another vector. If we do this, we can go ahead and rewrite this whole system of equations as a matrix equation, right. So we are all familiar with how we can take a matrix and multiply it with a vector and in general we know how to multiply a matrix with another matrix, right, provided, you know, they are compatible, right. So you are all familiar with this, so we will not spend too much time in going to the details of this, right. So we know how you can take the first row and multiply with this column, right, if, if you are, uh, you know, the, the number of uh, rows of, you know, the the matrix which appears to the right must be equal to the number of columns of the matrix which, are, which is on the left if matrix multiplication must be well defined. So in this case of course, uh, you know, R is a vector, right, a vector is also a kind of matrix um, in which the number of rows, you know, there are three, three rows in this vector R and which matches with the number of columns in M. So it's M times R is completely well defined, it will give you a, another matrix which in this case is just a vector, right. So matrix times a vector will give you another vector which will be a three row single column vector which is k, right. So you have to, so this is a compact way of, you know, writing down the same information that's already written, uh, given in these, so this system of equations, right. So th there's another matrix of interest which is called the augmented matrix. So the augmented matrix is denoted as A. And so where you in fact also tag along this vector k also is, you know, is appended into the matrix M itself and then you get the augmented matrix. So you have the M matrix, the first three rows and three columns, um, you know, that's, that's where the uh, matrix M is embedded and then there is, you know, an extra column which is also um, included to form the augmented matrices, matrix. So now we will describe a method called, the, you know, a method which allows us to recast a given matrix in a very convenient form, right. 
So you might be interested in understanding, you know, how much information is contained in, uh, you know, all these different number of, uh, you have a number of equations given to you, but do they all, you know, contribute some extra bit of information or is there some redundancy or is there some inconsistency? You know, these are the kinds of questions which can be answered if we use this algorithm which will allow us to recast this matrix in the so-called row reduced or row echelon form, right? So it's which is best explained with the help of an example, right? In order to do this, let us, uh, you know, just uh, uh, state that these elementary row operations are, are the operations which are allowed, right? So elementary row operations are operations which are invertible in the sense that you know, by doing this, there is no loss of information. Whatever is there, you know, you have a set of equations and then you, you are allowed to do these row operations and then come up with another set of equations, really. And there is no, you know, uh, any, uh, there's nothing essentially different between the first set of equations and the second of set of equations that come about when you do perform these elementary row operations because they're reversible, right? One is, you can interchange rows, right? So it doesn't matter whether you had, you know, equation one appeared first and equation two appeared sec second, or if you were to swap those equations, the, the content is the same, right? So that is allowed. Second is, you can multiply a row by a non-zero constant, right? That also seems clear that there should be no loss of information. You could, you can always divide by that non-zero number again and get back the old equation. And the third thing you're allowed to do is, you can add, you can take a multiple of one row and add to another room. It's going to be consistent, right? So you can take one, one equation, multiply it by some constant factor and add it to another equation, right? Or add it to a multiple of another equation. There is no loss of information, right? So this is, these three operations are called elementary row operations. With the aid of these elementary operations, row operations, you can bring it into a form which is called the row echelon form. So let, let me show you this example. So I start with 2 minus 1 minus 1, this matrix that I have here, 2 minus 1 minus 1, 0, 6, 5, 3, 14, 1 minus 1, 1, 1, right? So we want it to bring it into a form where the leading entry of every row is 1, right? So that is one requirement. Then a column containing the leading entry of some row must have no other non-zero entries. And the leading entry keeps on moving to the right. So let's just, uh, let me try and illustrate this. Um, so I have uh, I have this matrix 2, 2, minus 1, 1, I have 2, minus 1, minus 1, 0. And then I have 6, 5, 3, 14. 6, 5, 3, 14. Then I have 1 minus 1, 1, 1. 1 minus 1, 1, 1. Right, so let me illustrate one step here explicitly and then I can explain what I already have it there. Right, so the idea is that I keep the first row as it is and then I will add, um, I will subtract three times the first row from the second row and replace the second row. So the first row remains as it is 2, minus 1, minus 1, 0. But then I take three times this, 6 minus three times this. So the idea is that I want a 0 here. So 0, then, so I have to do 5 minus three times minus 1. So this becomes 8. And then I have to do 3 minus, minus 3. So this becomes a 6. And then 14 remains a 14 because 3 times 0 is not going to change anything. Then likewise, I want to take this and convert this into 0. So I will do um, 2 times this minus 2. So I have 2, time, 2 into 1 minus 2 is 0. 2 into minus 2 minus 1, minus 2, minus minus 1 is minus 1, 2 into 1, so this becomes 3, 
and then I have 2 into 1 minus 0 is just 2. Right? So that's all I have done. So in the first step, I managed to bring these two coefficients to 0. In the next step, I will want to bring this also to 0. Right? So I can just add, you know, 8 times this plus this. That will give me 0 already. So let me do that also. So from here, I go here. So the first two rows remain unchanged. I have 2 minus 1 minus 1, 0, 0, 8, 6, 14, 0. Ah, so then I have, I'm going to, I want to convert this coefficient also to 0. So I will take 8 times this whole row and add it to the second row. So this goes to 0. 8 into 3 is 24 plus 6 is 30. 8 into 2 16 plus 4 is 30. So this is also done. Then I want to go to the next step which is I will just divide the third row by 30 right? because I don't lose anything with the multiplying throughout by a constant factor. In this case it's going to be 1 over 30 so this is 1 and 1. And here I am going to divide throughout by 8. So I have 0, 8 will become 1. So the idea is that the leading coefficient along any row must be made equal to 1. Um, so this is 1, 6 by 8 is 3 by 4 and 7 by 4. And the first row is going to become 1 minus a half minus a half and 0 and then finally I want to uh, you know in any any column containing the leading one so like here I have this leading one and I don't want any other elements in that column so I have to take the row, take row 1 and then use the information in row 2 to, to make this coefficient also, also to go to 0. So the way to do that will be to add um, half of second row to the first row. So if I do that then I have 1 remains as it is. So this will go to 0. So then I have to add uh, 3 by 8 minus 1 by 2. by 8 minus 1 by 2 so then I will uh, I'll have to repeat this operation at a later time so so the point is that I will do this once and then I'll have to do it again so I'm going to skip this step and then just write down the final answer which you can verify so it's just going to be 1 0 0 1 and then you'll get 0 1 0 1 I will allow you to do this operation right so this is not quite the row reduced uh, echelon form yet you'll have to do one more step and keep it do it carefully but i have given it given the answer here in the um in the slide form which you can you know, i'll allow you to complete the details so it's just going to be 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 0 1 so the, this is actually the final answer but the row reduce form Um, well, which is also the row reduced form and, and the solution both both in this case right so there is this back substitution which is, which is uh, also being used in here right so first of all we, re we can read out the answer from here right so the point here is not really so much to read out the answer as as the method right if you can bring it into this form where what are the requirements one is that the leading entry of every row is one right so that is a check we've already got it a column which contains containing the leading entry of some row must have no other non-zero entries right so that's where you have to do this 
extra hard work towards the end, which is to eliminate, uh, you know, to, to bring these coefficients. So, so when you go from this step to this step, you have to make sure that this is zero and also this is zero and also this is zero. In order to do this, you have to add row one and row two in a suitable way. So this part is not going to do anything to this coefficient one, will remain as it is. You have to just carefully add these guys, uh, add row, and, uh, row one and row two. And likewise, you have to add row two and row three in a suitable way, such that this coefficient also made equal to zero. And then if you do this, you are able to get all these coefficients, right? So this is the so-called row reduced uh, or row echelon form, right? So we will see some consequences of this in the next slide. Thank you.